In this video, we will begin to look at the composition of rigid transformations. And that just basically means, as you can see in your definition here, the combination, a composition of transformation is to perform more than one on the same figure. So perhaps you, you, you translate it and then you rotate it, or maybe you reflect it and then you rotate it and then you translate it. So one or more. So some of the more popular ones, one of the most popular ones is called a glide reflection. And this is defined as a composition of uh, a reflection and a translation. And the important thing to notice is that the translation, and that means the movement, either up, down, left, or right, needs to be in a direction parallel to the line of reflection. All right. And it, you'll hopefully explore these to uh, figure out, and it's in the text a little bit, to figure out uh, what happens if I reflect first and then translate, or what happens if I translate first uh, and then reflect. Uh, and hopefully you'll see that that may works the same either direction. So in this figure here that you see uh, on the graph, let me zoom in just a tad on it, a triangle, what would happen if I were to reflect it first? So let's say I reflected it about the y-axis. You know, this point would reflect right over here. This point uh, would reflect right over here. And this last point would reflect right over here. And we'd have our image of our triangle. That would be a reflection about the y-axis. And then I were to translate it, let's say I were to go down three spaces. Uh, if I go down three, um, one, two, three, and down one, two, three, I have this second image um, that I can make. Um, so uh, the way you would label this, if this was A, B, C, this would be A prime, B prime, C prime. If you've made a, another movement, then you're going to just use double prime, C double prime, B double prime, and A double prime. Um, so if what I, what I would challenge you to do after this video is think about what would happen if instead of reflecting about the y-axis and then translating down three spaces, what if I first translated down three spaces and then went across the y-axis? I want you to notice though from the definition that the, the movement, the translation, right? I moved it down was parallel to the axis that I reflected across. So if I were to reflect across the x-axis, then I would need to move this direction. That's what it means by parallel. Let's take a look at this on GeoGebra just a tad. Here we have a figure that you can see I've drawn in, uh, in there and I have a line. So you can reflect about that line and move it up or down as a glide reflection, or uh, as we did before, or you can do that across the uh, line that's perfectly horizontal. So let's take a look at um, what if I were to first reflect this image about this line, you can see that there, and then I were to translate it by a vector. Now I did not place a vector in here yet, so let me do one. Let's just use the same example I did before. Let's imagine moving down three spaces. And uh, once I have that vector in there, then I can translate this by this vector and you can see it down there. Well, what's interesting is to do that in the opposite order and see what happens. And let's go ahead and examine that. What if I were to take this original figure right over here and I were to translate it by a vector. So see how I put it down there? And then notice that if you were to then reflect, it would land on that final image as well. You can see how that the movements uh, could be the same either direction. And what I'm pointing out is if you do the reflection first and then move it down, it's the same as first moving it down and then doing the reflection over to that final resting spot. It just has to be parallel to it.